Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial about Vulkan.js's simple example package. Now, as its name indicates, the simple example is the simplest possible app you can build with Vulkan.js while still showcasing uh, what makes Vulkan.js interesting. So, you're looking at it right now. Here at the top, I have a sign in, sign up form for my user accounts. And then below that, I have a list of movies which is paginated so I can load more. Now, I don't pay too much attention to the, the layout. Um, I could probably fix that later, make it look a bit nicer, but for now, it's good enough for our purposes. And I'm going to start by signing up. So let's enter some random nonsense. And now that I have an account, you can see that the insert new document form has appeared. So I can add a movie, uh, let's, say, let's say Jaws number 14, I think it's out next year maybe, so 2018, great movie, and submit. So you'll see two things, first it appeared right there, and then there's also this edit button that lets me add a couple exclamation points if I want to. So you'll see the edit button isn't appearing on any other movie because the other movies uh, were not created by me, so they don't belong to my user account. And so, you know, right there, we've already seen quite a few features um, that Vulkan.js can take care of for you. So let's move to the code and get an overview of all this. The first thing we want to see here is the packages file in your uh, meteor directory dot meteor and you'll see that example simple is commented um, or rather uncommented while all the others are commented out so if you want to check out another example later on you just do this but for now we'll stay with example simple now let's take a look at the code which is in the packages slash example simple directory and so you can see there's uh, nine files total the first one we'll uh, need to look at is the package.js file, which describes the contents of the package as well as its dependencies. As far as dependencies are concerned, it has three, uh, Vulkan Core, Vulkan Forms, and Vulkan Accounts. And then the, uh, the files, there's two, basically two entry points into the package, one for the server and one for the client server main.js and client main.js, which are here and here. Now, uh, these files are pretty simple. What we're doing here is importing modules slash index.js and importing seed.js. On the client, uh, we also import modules index.js. Uh, we are exporting movies, but that's not strictly required. So we could very well just have uh, this. Now, on the server, we also have a seed file, which will just, you know, seed our database with data, just so we have something uh, to show out of the box. So next up is that uh, index file that's imported. It imports two other files, a collection.js and routes.js. Let's take a look at routes.js first. First, we are importing add route from Vulkan Core, which is the uh, utility used to add a new route to create a new route and we are creating one first by importing a component and then by creating a route named movies at the path just the slash so the, the root path and we want that route to show the component movies list that which component is right here um, it's not super long but first let's take a look at our collection so right here, we are importing the movies collection. And uh, a collection in uh, Vulkan.js is basically a, a model. It's a, a type of data. So it could be posts, comments, users. Those could all be collections, or in this case, movies. And we create a new collection with the movies, um, sorry, the create collection function, which takes the name of the collection, movies, the type name, for the collection. In other words, uh, the, 
the name of the type of a single document. So usually it will be the same as the collection name, but singular. And that will be very useful when it comes time to build our GraphQL schema. Speaking of schema, uh, we are adding, uh, importing and passing the schema here. Now, this is not going to be a GraphQL schema. It's going to be a JavaScript schema. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have resolvers, which are going to be the default resolvers, and mutations, which are going to be default mutations. Finally, um, we define some permissions for members. So members in Vulkan.js are just regular users with a user account. Members can perform the following actions, movies.new, movies edit own, movies remove own. Then, then the last thing we do here is add a default view. So a view is kind of a, a preset on how to view data. In this case, we want to view movies sorted by uh, created at. So just uh, in order of creation or descending order rather. So we are uh, assigning the uh, created at minus one property on the sort property of the options property of an object that is returned by the view. And that will all get passed to MongoDB so that we know in which order to query for data. Now, something to not notice is that this will also be used on the client. So this means we can ensure the same order both uh, on the server and the client, which is how uh, the, the app knew where to insert this new document when we created it. So that's a, a neat feature. So I mentioned uh, three things which you might not be familiar with, uh, schema, resolvers, and mutations. So first, the schema. The schema is right here, and it's basically a JavaScript object that defines every uh, possible property of a collection document. So in this case, a movie should contain or possess an ID, a created at date, a user ID, and then these three are, are the, the basic properties that most collections will have. The next three are specific to movies, a name, year, and review. Where things get interesting is these three uh, properties, viewable by, insertable by, and editable by. And these take as argument uh, a list of user groups, which defines who can perform these actions. So in this case, uh, guests can view uh, the name, year, and the review fields. And guests are basically anonymous users. So just if you uh, if you land on a Vulkan.js app, you haven't registered, you haven't created an account, you are considered as a guest. So this means you are still able to view all that data. On the other hand, who can insert or edit uh, a field? Well, you have to be a member, right? You have to have an account. Now, as you've seen earlier, you can only edit a movie that you actually own. So it's not just uh, any member that can edit any movie. And that's actually specified in the default mutations. So a mutation uh, is basically uh, the act of changing data on the server. And there's uh, three default mutations, uh, inserting a new document, editing an existing document, and removing a document. And so when you get started with Vulkan.js, um, you can use these default mutations that kind of give you uh, standard uh, functions that behave in a pretty standard way. So for example, uh, they only let you edit or remove a document if you own it. That's just one example. Similarly, resolvers. A resolver is the thing that actually um, gives you data, that actually fetches the data uh, in your database and then sends it to the client. And in Vulkan.js, there's three default resolvers, a uh, list for a list of documents, a single for a single document, and total for the total number of documents that match a given query. And uh, get default resolvers will also uh, pre-populate your app with these three default resolvers. That being said, you can uh, very well code your own resolvers, and that's usually what you'll want to do once you're past the prototyping stage. And if you want to learn to do so, as well as how to code your own mutations, you can check out the next example 
uh, which is the movies example. But for now, let's keep the default. Um, it's nice and simple and it works out of the box. And to finish things off, let's look at our component, our React component. So we only have one, but it does a bunch of things. First, here uh, we have a helmet tag. Now, helmet is a React package that's used to insert uh, head tags, like links or scripts and so on. And here we're using it to load the bootstrap style sheet. So this is not Vulkan specific in any way. It's just a, a convenient way to add content to the head without, uh, even if we don't have access to the head component uh, right here. Moving down, we have the components.accounts login form component. And that's our login form uh, right here. So, uh, also handling all, all the, the account stuff like changing your password, signing in, signing out, and so on. So if you want to get that little bit of uh, user account functionality, all you need to do is pop this component in. It's already made. It's in the Vulkan accounts package and it works pretty well. Now we have a test for the loading variable. And all these variables are uh, props for the component, meaning they are passed by the component's parent. And in this case, um, to create that parent, we are wrapping the component with what's known as higher order components. And these are two functions here with list and with current user that basically um, manufacture a parent, which will then pass on props or, or variables to the uh, component that is their children or their child, sorry. So let's go back to, um, to our example and we can see exactly what I'm talking about by going to the React DevTools. So here I have the movies list component and you can see right above it, I have with current user movies list and above that I have with list with state with Apollo. Basically all these are augmenting movies list with these props. So if I were to remove uh, one of these, I would lose part of uh, these props. You can see I also have access to, to the router, uh, the location, the and anyway, all you need to remember for now is that by wrapping my component with these higher order components or HOCs, I can give it access to props. And in this case, uh, the props I want are uh, a loading prop, which indicates if I'm loading data or not, and then a results prop, which will contain the results I've loaded from the server. In other words, the list of movies. So in case you're wondering uh, where exactly we specify how to load that data, this happens right here in the options object that we pass to with list. So here we are only specifying the collection uh, in which to look for data and the limit of how many documents we want to load at once. But of course you can specify a lot more options such as how often to refresh the data, um, even which fields of, you know, the collection you want to query for, and also filtering and sorting options. But anyway, going back to the, uh, uh, the, the meat of our component here, we have uh, our results, which we map to a card component. So this is another uh, small utility in Vulkan. Basically, we'll take a document and display it as a card. That's, that's what it does. You can optionally uh, restrict it to a list of fields or it will just display everything. And then, you know, you pass it the collection, the document and the current user if you want this uh, edit field form, sorry. Apart from that, we have uh, up here the uh, insert new document form. So you can see to display the form, I'm calling the components.smartform component and passing the collection in which I want to insert a new document. What's really cool is because we have this uh, central schema that defines what our collection documents should look like, we're able to actually generate the form just from the schema, meaning you only need to specify the collection, but you don't actually need to code any of the form. 
and it will uh, work when you click submit. Uh, validation will work. It will show you the right form fields based on uh, who you are and what permissions you have and so on. And then the last thing we have is just a load more button. If so, total count is the total uh, number of uh, results on the server. Results.length is the number of results we actually have. If the total count on the server is still bigger than the results we have, then show the lo load more button. And on click, we'll just trigger the load more uh, function, which is passed as a prop by withlist. And that's really all there is to it. Um, you know, the, the result might seem, seem simple, and it is named a simple example after all, but there's really a lot going on. There's uh, a form being gener generated automatically, there's data being loaded, there's uh, this card component, and the edit form, which is also generated in the same way. Uh, there's pagination, there's user accounts. So this is a great illustration of you know how things work in Vulkan.js, how you can very quickly set things up. And if you are uh, still interested, I really recommend uh, moving on to the movies example, which is actually the same result or almost the same result, but instead of relying on all these um, uh, pre-made uh, components like the card component, we're going to go a bit more in depth and show you how to uh, be more granular when it comes to data loading and other things. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to come by our Slack chat room at slack.vulcanjs.org and hopefully see you very soon.